sky is falling. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to have a little bit of our journal fun. And we're going to, it's the first of five, um, it's the first of five series that we're going to do. I'm going to each month use one of the Bloom Girl stamps and we're going to create an art journal. And with that page, or double page, I'm going to show you fun little techniques and art mediums or mixed media mediums that you may not have used before. So we're going to have a lot of fun with these. Break out the art book, the uh, Bloom Girl art book. We're going to use that. You can use any art journal you have, but the art books are really fun. So I'm going to go ahead and maneuver the camera back down, and we'll go ahead and get started so we can get the pages done. All right? Okay. And I think I need to uh, grab something real quick just so my lens isn't dirty. Okay, there we go. I saw a smudge on there, so we don't want that to mess around, to mess us up. All right, so if you haven't seen the art book, I'll show you guys. Most of you have seen it. You ladies that joined us in Canada, I know, saw it. And we had a lot of fun with those last weekend. We had such a great time. The ladies there were so nice and so fun to hang out with. I went so, um, so, so, so. It was fun. Um, I'm recording, Carrie. We, one class we did one of the art journals. And this is the art book. And inside I'll show you what the insights look like. But the, it's an 8x8 eight eight book. And this is what the interior looks like. Okay, there we go. A little better light. So each of the books comes with an album inside already. And I've used a couple of the sheets in here, but you could see uh, some of the pages, how they already come started, and you could build off of these. So anybody from beginner to advanced could take this art art book and turn it into an art journal, you could turn it into a sketchbook, you could turn it into a scrapbook, whatever your, or even a daily, like a little daily uh, journal because the size is perfect for adding those uh, two by fours, two by two pictures in there. So i just show you a few of the sheets. Here's another one, they're all upside down, I don't know why I have them like that, but so you can see, here's another one. We'll probably use this one because it's got a nice background for the colors I'm using. Show you, and all of the work, all of the artwork in this album was hand done. Uh, first of all, all of the pieces were hand painted, hand drawn, hand built. This is a full mixed media page that I created and then we created it, turned it into a digital image. So I, will say that you will not find anything like this in the market and if you do um we need to talk <laughs> like i told the girls in canada if you see my stuff you need to let me know so here's another bloom girl that's inside i know some of our great design team members have uh, cut her out and um, embellished her colored her and then used her on the cover of the book as well so this is another one that is comes in the art book. I know my lighting keeps switching on us. I apologize. So that's another one. Let's see. We have nice like soft watercolor pages and we have some handwriting, love, laugh, create, a bunch of different words. Here's another bloom girl that's in there. Fun, huh? And then Let's see. Oh, there's another Bloom Girl. This one's actually one of the stamp images. Just a smaller version. And actually, let's use this one. Because this one already has a kind of a fun watercolor feel to it. It's hard to see in the uh, camera. I know that. But we're going to go ahead and use that one. So let's move these out of the way. Now that my camera likes the black. Look, these... Uh, webcams really do like the darker colors. I wish I could find one and if you guys have know of one that 
doesn't adjust like this one does, please let me let me know. Okay, let's see. So, here are my base pages, and what I do, I like to do when I'm, if I can take the pages out like this, especially if you can take the pages out, I go ahead and tape them down to my surface. That way they don't buckle and um, curl while I'm working on them. If you have masking tape or painter's tape, I suggest using that. You can even use washi tape, which is which I'm going to use. I've already, again, I packed a bunch of my stuff up for some upcoming classes that I have to ship off. And it's all in there. So I'm just going to take this down to my work surface. And you can leave a little edge. I'm leaving a little border on it. Hold those down. Okay. It's so quiet in my house. Everybody left. The kids went to the river for the weekend, so I've had a quiet day. Amazing, isn't it? Okay. So I'm going to continue just taping around the edge. I'm going to make a little two-page art journal. I probably have these pages backwards, but that's okay. All right. So we have our work surface prepared. I'm not going to gesso these because I want the paper, the watercolors, and the sprays to soak right into the papers. It gives a little different effect if you gesso first. It doesn't seep into the papers the same. But you could definitely gesso some of these pages that may have a little bit too much color for you to work off of. Definitely you can uh, prime them with some gesso. All right, so let me give you a little glance at the original. A page that we created, I created, to give you an idea of what we're going to be making. Now, here is a little uh, look at what we're doing. We're going to use the stamp, the Bloom Girl stamp. We're going to add some gold foil paint. We're going to add our um, sprays. We're going to add watercolors. We're going to just have a really, this one's going to be nice and light. And just a nice uh, way to step into art journaling if you're new to it. We're not going to get really heavy into art mediums. I wanted the first one to start out really light and almost, it's not, it's not simple, but it is um, not as intimidating, I'd say. So we're going to use some watercolors. We're going to use a little bit of glitter. And if you know me, that's saying a lot because I am not a fan of glitter. We're going to use some Prima doilies and also a few of the Viva paint pens. So we're gonna have a bunch of stuff to play with. So let's get started. First I'm gonna go start out by stamping my ink, or my stamp, and I'm gonna use, let's see, where is it at? Oh, I'm gonna use the pit pen. And the reason why I'm using the pit pen, where did you go? You can use gray or black. This one's pretty dark. It's great. It's an artist pit pen. It is water-based, but with this, I'm able to get in and just color in the pieces that I want to use. I don't want to use the entire stamp. I just want to use some of the lower pieces that are on here because I want to cover up a lot of it with some of the paints. All right. So we're just going to do her face, part of her neck, and her flowers at the bottom. So we're just going to run our little pin right over here. And I know these. Um, this is going to be a little different than my original sample because the book is a little bit smaller than the one I was working in. But it also gives you less room than you have to uh, fill in. <laughs> Some of us, we don't have a lot of time to fill in a huge album. And that's one reason why I made the 8x8 size. It's quick and easy to work in. You don't have to spend a lot of time. And it's still big enough to kind of give you an outlet for your creativity. So I'm just going to color those out like so. Give it a little breath in case some of our ink dried up. I'm going to go ahead and stamp it on this one page. Just 
it's lightly pressing, or firmly, I should say, not lightly, but firmly pressing down, holding it in place so we have our stamp down. I'm not going to push real hard in here or in her face because I don't want that black ink in case I got into the open spots to get onto our background. So we have our base, so we're starting out with our little face. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure this is dry before I start working with some of our other stuff. I'm going to let her dry while I pull out a little... Oh, I don't want to use that because my light will go dark. Let's see. Let's grab a paper towel or a towel because what we're going to do is we're going to spray some flowers. Or, or not our flowers, but our... Um, look at my beautiful towel. We're going to uh, paint some of our doilies for our background. So these are the Prima doilies. The item number on this is 569464. And we're just going to spray these with some of our color bloom sprays. And I am going to use, let's see, I used Peony originally. I don't, I used the last of that on my samples and I haven't gotten any more. So we're going to use a little bit of uh, tangerine. Let's see. Maybe we'll use gilded instead. Let's use gilded. Make sure with the blue, color bloom sprays, we used these at uh, Art Venture last weekend and the ladies loved them. The biggest, uh, a few points on the color bloom sprays if you haven't used these yet. And of course, the f first and the biggest is the sprayer. I love the fact that you're using it as a trigger nozzle instead of a pump action. You don't have as much drippage like you do with the pump action. If it gets um, any type of mica gets in there with the pump, what will happen is it will sit at that uh, spot where it sprays out of the bottle and starts dripping down the side of the bottle and it makes a huge mess. Also with these, you can get about two to two and a half bottles worth of spray out of here. And my suggestion is once you get about halfway down into the bottle, fill it up with water. And again, when you get down to the halfway mark, fill it up again. And that way you'll get two full. And you can even try a, th a third time, but I suggest just two halfways and then uh, use it all the way down. Make sure when you're, um, you hear that agitator um, in the bottom, it's just a little bead. And what it'll do is it'll make sure all of that uh, glimmer at the bottom will get shaken up into your spray. Now, if you're first uh, starting with the bottle, make sure you shake it really well. And then you want to slowly pump. This one hasn't been used. So you want to slowly pump and prime that trigger. If it doesn't do it after like three times, shake it one more time, and then I guarantee you it'll start spraying. So I'm just quickly... I mean, just quick, I mean, you could see the uh, cover, co cover, the color coverage on these. Just after two or three spritzes, it's fully covered. You don't have to sit and waste a lot of spray on these because there is a lot of um, color and mica in the sprays. So you're not going to waste a lot of product. I'm going to go ahead and um, set those aside. We're going to use those later on as accent pieces. Pick up my little towel, put it back in its little spot. Now what I'm going to do is to start building our background, I'm going to take one of our little masks. This one is Anna. It's from Anna's collection. I don't have the item number. As you can see, it's been uh, used uh, quite often. And I just want to add a few little spots of spray. I'm going to come over here in the corner. Set that aside. Now I want to pick some up of the color up because I don't want it quite this dark. So I'm just going to bring in another rag. Pat off some of the color. We're going to mix, um, mix this up a little bit more with the watercolors. Now our sprays are water soluble. Just like most of your artist sprays or your uh, glimmer mists or um, the Heidi Swap, anything with a, a glimmer in them, most of them are going to be water soluble. So if you go over this with another art medium that is wet, it's going to reactivate those mediums. 
So if we go over this with water, you'll still have your design here, but it'll soften it and blend it a little more. If you want your images to stay just like it is here, I suggest using a fixable medium between uh, layers. This one is made by Krylon. It's a workable fixative. There's two different types, a workable and a finish. A finish would be one you'd put at the very end of the project. That one is a lot harder to add mediums on top of because of the surface it gives the um, project. This one's a workable, so it has a little bit of grit to it. So you'll still be able to add art mediums on top. Right now, I'm not going to add it because I want to blend these out just a little bit so they're not so uh, bold. And now I'm going to go to my watercolors. Now, you can use a lot of different water. There's a lot of different watercolor uh, mediums out there. You can use regular um, watercolors you find at our supply store. These are Grumbacher. They're uh, more of an opaque uh, watercolor base. You can see there's a lot of different color choices in this one little palette. You can also use Twinkling H2Os. They come in a lot of different um, colors as well. Here's a couple little, different little sizes. You can see um, you can get the large palette or the small one. Let me find my the one I was using. So we have these, and then I am going to go ahead and use these watercolors right here. So you're going to need some clean water. Watercolors are very nice and flowy. They're very popular right now. That soft look is very pleasant to the eye, and I think that's kind of why it has gained so much popularity uh, lately in trends. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just blend some of our colors out. I'm going to start with this nice soft yellow color. And this is like a um, Indian yellow or like a sun yellow. Okay. Make sure what I'm going to do is a wash, what's called a wash. With a wash you want to make sure you get your background wet first. So I'm just going to add, and as you can see, just the water alone is activating our sprays. I'm going to just put out some water onto our background. And now you can see why I tape these down. The middles might warp a little, but we're not curling and um, trying to fight with the curling paper. Now I'm going to add a little bit of color to it. You can see the color on the camera is like really bright. I'll show you a picture once it's done. If I can take a picture tonight of it. And we're just kind of blending that out. Bring in a little bit more color right around her face. Soften that out a little bit. We just want this nice to be nice and airy and light. Let's add a little bit of uh, red to this since we're working in warmer colors and if you could dab uh, splatter some water just plain water on top and what it'll do is give it that nice um, like almost um, watermark effect where it runs the uh, colors together gives it a really pretty blend so I'm just going to do the same thing over here Blend our colors. I'm going to blend out our sprays to kind of fill in the rest of our page with a little bit of color. Going right over the top of them with just plain water. Okay. Pretty much getting the entire page wet. Let's add a little bit of more of a orange red up here. Add a little bit of water. We make a lot of really nice backgrounds this way with just a little bit of watercolor. 
and playing with paper. Now I am going to heat dry this or we'll be here forever waiting on this to dry. So let's go ahead and plug in the heat gun. I am actually going to be there in Pittsburgh. I'll be doing demos for uh, Grumbacher and Alvin. I'll be doing um, oil paints for Grumbacher. So if anybody's headed out that direction, make sure you come and find me. It'll be fun. And it's fun, um, like with the watercolors, while it's still wet, you can really kind of dry the color and give it really harsh edges uh, this way with the heat gun, kind of direct where the color is going to go. I don't want a lot over her face, so I'm, I want her face kind of uh, really pale compared to the background. So I'm just driving the color away from her face. Now this paper, it's about a medium grade. It's not a really heavy mixed media paper. So you will have a little bit of um, paint come through the other side, but that'd be the time to use your gesso. If you want to use the other side for another art journal, just add a layer of gesso onto the other side and you're good to go for another, um, another double page project. And I'll even show you that next week on our next project. I'll use one of the two uh, pages and we'll build up the color um, on top of the gesso. Or did I say next week? The next project. Okay. All right. Alrighty. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit more um, depth using some of our other mediums. Now I uh, have this gold paint that I found at Michael's. It's kind of a new favorite of mine. And I'll show you in just a second. It's my it's made by plaid and it's over it's liquid leaf it's gold leaf this is uh brass you can get gold brass and i think bronze and silver and you know the shaker pens that you could find as well that have the gold uh paint inside of them this is a jars version of it and it is amazing it's become a favorite of my mine on my most recent pieces so we're going to kind of highlight the background with this paint and this is made by um Let's see, I believe this is Plaid. Yeah, Plaid makes the paint. It's over by the wood. You know, uh, the adhesives and your other gold foils. It's over there in that area. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to paint it over my mask because I don't want to ruin my mask because this stuff will stick to your paint brushes unless you use like a turpentine. I save, I have a, one brush that I put aside that I use just for the gold. And I'm going to take a pencil or a pen and just sketch out where I want my gold pieces. Now on the original, I used a butterfly stamp or a mask. This time I'm just gonna use a circle. And we're just gonna trace out a couple circles. My dog is not happy right now. She's out in the patio banging against the patio door. So we're just gonna Kind of trace out a few squiggles. Let's see. A couple of little small ones, I think, down here. Oh, she's going to be in trouble when I'm done here. She's like body slamming my door right now. Okay. So we have the, the gold, and all you do is go ahead and paint this in. You want to make sure your brush is somewhat dry. You don't want a lot of water added into the paint. 
Now I will tell you the paint does have some fume to it, so make sure you use it in a well ventilated area. So I'm just going to go right over inside our little circles. And there's enough in the lid once you shake it that you could probably do your one project. It goes a really long way. I mean, you don't even need your stencils. You can just go ahead and go wild with the stuff. I love it. Love it, love it. We go right up into her hair. She, can you hear her? Oh my gosh. She's going to get it. No one's here to yell at her. She's been in the house with me all day, so she's kind of spoiled. But she's like a little kid. As soon as I get on camera, she'd be somewhere in the house making a mess. I think Hubby just got home, so he can deal with her. Okay, just painting those in. The gold really um, stands out against the lighter background. Really fun. Another little trend that's popular right now. Hold on. She's making a bunch of noise. I don't want you guys hearing her. Painting and painting. I like the foil, uh, the liquid foil, compared to like a gold paint because it gives it that nice gold finish, and it gives a nice even finish, and it's permanent. You're not gonna. This isn't gonna wash off if we add something on top of it. Like I said, this, this page doesn't have a lot of layers. We'll get heavier into the layers the further we get. I just wanted to kind of show you some background ideas you can use on your scrapbook pages or your cards or your art journal. And how to use our lovely bloom girls. If you're not a colorer, you could definitely use them just like we are here with just a little pop of color around her and she still stands out against everything else. Okay. Two more and we'll be done with the circles. Ooh, kinda went out of line on that one. We'll fix it. Okay. And this stuff dries almost immediately. It does not have a lot of work time. You can't blend it with water. So if you wanted to spread it out, it won't go. Just like those pins that, um, I mean, you could still get them, but this is kind of an easier version, in my opinion, to use than the pins, just for the fact is you can uh, paint them as thinly or as heavily as you'd like. All right. So we have our little gold accents to the background. Put my gold away before I spill it everywhere. All right. Next, we're going to add a little bit of gesso. And... Let's see. Right here. It's going to dry it out. Got 
try to bust out a new one. This stuff doesn't have to be very thick. It could be a thinner medium. We're just adding um, some highlights to the page, kind of giving her a little crown. So I'm just going to use a little bit of gesso. I'm not using my watercolor brushes. Um, I do suggest having just one little set, even if it's uh, like three or four brushes set aside for just watercolors. That way you don't, um, the brush bristles when you start using them with um, acrylics and go back and forth can sometimes ruin your brushes. So I suggest having a separate set. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of gesso. We're gonna make little sun rays out of her head. Go all the way across both pages. I'm going to camouflage a lot of the stuff that's right around her face. Okay. All right. Very easy little step. I'm going to dry that, make sure our gesso is nice and dry. And then we can start adding all the goodies on top. All right. <laughs> okay. Justin doesn't take much time to dry. Right. Oop. So that is dry. Now we're going to add our little uh, doilies that we painted earlier. These are a little bright, but they'll work for our project. They look brighter on the camera. We could also dull them down with a little bit of gesso as well if you want. So I'm just going to take Fabric Tack by Beacon, and I'm going to go ahead and tack down our doilies. Here. I just want a little dimension on it. Don't need a whole lot. Let's see. Don't, okay. Hubby's telling me there's an accident on the way home. At least he's not in it. And then we're going to make her a little crayon. So now we can build on top of her crown. Let's see. This is causing the shadow on her. Move that out of the way. And we have some iced enamels. Okay, so ice resin has fun uh, shattered mica. And what it is, it looks like um, slate from uh, like some, some rocks that you find, especially here. They have little pieces that flake off. That's almost what this reminds me of. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, lay a little bit of gel medium down onto the page. And then I'm going to go ahead and lay this mic on top of it. And it gives a nice, fun little finish. It's really cool. You don't need a lot of gel. You just need a thin coat wherever you want your mica to go. And I'm starting, I'm going to be adding a little bit of glitter too, but I want to start with my larger pieces first so that I could put that where I want and then build up the lighter uh, layers later on. So I'm going to go ahead and grab brush. I kind of want a junky brush. I kind of use the cheapier ones to do gel medium and 
the other art mediums. So we're just going to kind of bundle the gel medium right around her face, a little bit onto our doily, trail some out a little bit. And then we're going to take a little bit of this mica and we're just going to layer it right on top. Ah, oh, the camera. I'm sorry, you guys. Ah, there you go. Okay, so we're going to put our little mica down. Some of it might move once we lift our page. I'm going to kind of paint some of the gesso or gel medium over the top as well. Give our little princess a little glimmer. Now the gel medium is going to dry clear, so once it's totally dry, you're not going to see it. Kind of put a few flakes here and there open out in the open area. I love these flakes because um, you start working with these, some of, sometimes the color, whatever they're dyed in, will lift up onto the project, which is pretty cool as well. It's kind of one of my new favorites, little bits to use. I'm going to add a little more gel medium onto this since it's on the doily. Once I think I have most of the stuff down, I'm going to go ahead and take the heat gun, blow off some of the extra excess stuff off. Okay. Let's do some of this is a little tedious stuff, but it adds. The little touches here and there are really what add to a piece. Kind of shows that you're putting effort into your pieces and care, not effort, but you're putting heart and care into them. Okay. So we have the mica down, and again, this is um, by Ice Resin. It's under their Iced Enamels uh, line. Let me see if I can get this. Come, There you go, Shattered Mica. And this is what it looks like in the jar. Fun stuff. It comes in a bunch of different colors. Now that I have my uh, gel medium still on there, I'm just going to shake a little bit of glitter just to kind of break it up and give it a little more dimension. Blow the excess glitter off everywhere, all over your desk. Alrighty. And now we can add our little um, stickles and our crystals, which I'm going to add our crystals right now. And the crystals I'm using is uh, package number 551506. It's a nice uh, warm toned package of crystals. I'm just going to start placing them down on top of the doily. Now you may, because of our mediums, may have to add a little bit of adhesive, ah, adhesive to them. Also because of the glitter. And I'm just taking random sizes and clustering them together. And you could take a, gosh darn it. You could pair, take a pair of uh, tweezers and do this. Or one of the gem setters, the little tools. You don't want to get your fingers all gross. I used about half a pack of crystals, but Half a pack of crystals is not that much. 
You can get a lot of wow out of a half a pack of crystals. And that dog is still going at it at the back door. She's kind of going to be in trouble when I'm done. I'm not going to lie. So we're just going to keep placing them. I wish I'll, I'll give you guys a little more close up once we I get the details in and you guys can see all the little bits and pieces we've added to her face. All the pretties we're putting around her. Now I'm bringing these down, gosh darn it, without it sticking in my finger. I'm going to kind of frame out this flower that's showing next to her face. Like so. Oh. Can you guys hear her? She sounds like there's an earth... She's making it sound like there's an earthquake in my house. <laughs> Hi ladies, you guys just showing up. I'm going to show you guys kind of a close up of the her hair piece, how it's coming along. You can see how we're just layering the pieces. I'm going to add a little bit more over on this side. Very easy, quick. You don't have to spend a whole lot to do the art journal pages. You're just starting out and you kind of want to get a feel for it set of watercolors some glitter color bloom spray that's kind of pretty inexpensive investment when you're talking about art journals okay so we now have our little headpiece I'm gonna add a little bit more color I have my stickles you can go in and add just pops of color here and there across the page you can add a little bit more through your gems here. Kind of trail them out into the rays that you've created. Pulling that design over into our another our second page. Okay. Just random, random little spots and dots. And then what you could do, I used a charcoal pencil. And I'm digging, I gotta dig under the desk. For, oh, here's one right here. And you can journal whatever you want across the page. I can't write upside down or I would. So you can just, let's do one. I'll try one. I'm not gonna say it's gonna turn out perfect. So you can just sketch rough just a rough sketch now it won't go over the gold you can see kind of how it's light over the gold the nice part is you don't have to have nice handwriting you just write whatever you want you can doodle mess around See that let's see love and um, let's see I gotta figure out which way I gotta write my letters my page is a little wet still so gotta be careful when I'm writing that I don't rip the paper okay so we write in there now we're going to add a little bit more color to the stamp that we have here. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of tangerine. It's really bright. This is another color boom spray. I'm going to take the lid off. I'm just going to dip my paintbrush right into the bottle. The color. Just add a little dab of color to our flower. Here. Over here. Like I said, you don't have to be an artiste 
to color in these color blooms or these bloom girls. You just have to know how to put the color down. So we add those. I'm going to add her little cheeks. I added a little bit of pink to her cheeks on the original. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to open up my, let's use this. I'm going to take my Twinkling H2O's. Get a little bit of water in there. Blend that up a little bit. Just take a little bit of exaggeration to your cheeks. It's just something fun. Okay. And let's do a little bit more color out here. Okay. Do you guys have any questions so far? Twinkling H2O's. The color on this, let me see, is rose gold. It's one of my favorites. It's a really nice warm mauve color. Okay. They are rosy cheeks. Gotta exaggerate sometimes, especially when you're a person that doesn't wear a lot of makeup. Kind of exaggerate in your artwork. <laughs> So let's see, let's add, hmm, we can add some more. This, this page went a little quicker than I thought. We can take some uh, Lumineer uh, 3D pen or paint and add a little bit more to her background. Oh, that one will explode it a little bit. That's okay. Another, um, positive about taping down your paper is you aren't tempted to move it until once it's dry. Okay. Now remember anything you put on the tape in the center is going to be lifted and I didn't pay attention to that very well earlier. Oh, I just did it again. Let's add a little bit more color to the bottom of her flowers. I'm going to open oh, Gilded and a little bit of the Lime Wedge. Oh, let me shake that up, make sure I get some of the color in there. You can hear that agitator in there. That helps prevent the clogging that you get in some of the sprays. That agitator breaks up the mic and it doesn't have a chance to settle in the bottom and collect in the bottle. So I'm just haphazardly coloring in some of this filigree and leaves. I want to keep it kind of messy because our background is a watercolor mess. And um, so I'm just kind of keeping it close to our um, outlines. I'm not getting exact. I just want color down. It kind of gives it that softer look. You don't have to color inside the lines. I'm going to come in with our gilded. Add a little bit more color. I wipe my brush on my hand a lot. I'm going to color in our little powder puffs right here. Like so. And I think she's good, you guys. Like I said, I wanted to start with just a soft, light color um, background. Give you guys a few ways to use the sprays. Um, do you have any questions on the sprays or the stamps? Those are the, oh, they're the sequins um, Raja. Yeah, the Raja Centers. That's what we were using. <laughs> if you guys have the instructions still from the class, the products that were used are in the back of the instructions.
Thank you guys. Um, well, we almost did exactly an hour. So if you guys have anything, let me know. If you have any questions, sorry. Okay, the camera's behaving. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, you can ask me on the Live with Prima page. Also, if you guys didn't know, I'm having a little contest on my artist page. And what it is, is I'm taking ideas, your guys' ideas, and I'm going to pick one of them for the next bloom, one of the next Bloom Girl stamps. And some of you guys have already, like, mentioned ideas I'm already working on. I can't tell you, but some of those have already been uh, sketched out. But I'm going to pick one of them, and the person that wins uh, will get to name the stamp as well as win a little prize pack that I have put together. It's uh, not just quite a little. I'm going to post the picture of the prize pack tonight. But one person will have uh, their idea created into a stamp, and they get to name the stamp and win a prize pack. So make sure you check out my uh, Facebook page. It's under Jalen Scraps if you look on Facebook, if you uh, don't follow me already. And I'm going to pick the winning. I've been, <laughs> people are asking me how I'm going through all these. I'm writing the ideas down and writing next to them whose ideas they were. And depending on um, which idea I pick, I'm going to pick the, whoever uh, gave the idea first. So we've had like duplicates of certain ones, but I'm going to, whoever brought the idea to me first is going to win. But we'll uh, go over more of that next week. Now, uh, Carrie, who's up? next uh, Tuesday. Let's see. I can't see. Thank you. I don't have the list for next week, but Carrie will make sure that you guys have the information for the next show. Thank you for coming tonight. I always enjoy coming on Live with Prima and giving you guys uh, new ideas, new ways to use your product. And again, if you ever have any questions on a project that I've created, you are more than welcome to ask me and I'm always willing to help with um, anything you want to try out too. So have a good evening everybody or good morning or wherever you are in the world watching Live with Prima and I'll catch you guys next time. Next month we're going to go ahead and use, let's say, um, we'll use the page stamp. So if you're going to want to, if you're wanting to kind of buy the stamps. We're going to use them all, but the next show we'll go ahead and use the page stamp and create our next two-page uh, original uh, layout uh, with the page stamp. So if you're kind of following along, uh, that's the one we're going to be using next. So have fun and enjoy. See you guys later.